From the continued wait for a new courthouse in Red Deer to calls for representative juries and tracking trends to make cities safer, it is time for our weekly crime panel. And joining us this evening, retired criminologist and former warden at the Edmonton Max, Keith Spencer. Good evening. Former Alberta Information and Privacy Commissioner Frank Work and Calgary defense lawyer Greg Dunn is back. Good evening, gentlemen. Great to see you. Good evening. Great. Good to see you. All right, as we heard from Mayor Tara Veer before the break, Red Deer is awaiting word of a new courthouse and even has a parcel of prime real estate ready for it. The city is currently maintaining the old RCMP detachment on that land at a price tag of roughly $77,000 per year in hopes the province will indicate its future plans. Having outgrown its seven-room courthouse, traffic court moved to a uh, nearby hotel two years ago to help with court congestion. Uh, Greg, QB trials already apparently being booked into 2017. And uh, what had been roughly a 45-week wait for a trial date a couple years ago, now set to be in the range of 53 weeks. What does a lengthy delay do to a case? Well, you know, lengthy delays obviously from a, they're a pretty, they're a pretty good friend to a criminal defense lawyer. I mean, in fact, um, they're no friend to the prosecution. They're no friend to victims of, of crime. They're no friend uh, to the Crown prosecutors, but they're good friends to the defense lawyers in terms of getting charges thrown out or stayed uh, on the basis of delay. So, uh, you know, from a tactical perspective and a completely selfish perspective, uh, they're good for defense lawyers, but they're not good for the criminal justice system as a whole. And, you know, anyone who is involved in the criminal justice system in the last 10 years uh, has seen this, uh, you know, possibly forecast this happen from a long time ago. And uh, it's a myriad of factors that have come to a head here today uh, that has led now to starting to lead to increase um, lag times in terms of, uh, in terms of getting to trial. Um, and one of them is the last 10 years that we've had in this jurisdiction in Alberta and also federally of um, increased regulation, increased uh, uh, crime um, uh, legislation from the uh, federal government. And what people don't understand is that when you pass increased uh, legislation with respect to crime and you, you want to regulate people in their everyday life, it comes with a cost. It comes with a cost, a financial cost. And that financial cost is increased uh, uh, demand on prosecutors. You need judges to hear the cases. You need courtrooms in order for the cases to sit. Yeah. And this all costs money. And at the end of the day, what we're seeing is uh, we're seeing with uh, you know, a precipitous drop in oil prices, a decrease in provincial revenues, uh, the province is coming uh, you know, in terms to a crisis point and being able to fund the criminal justice system. And it's really become the perfect storm in terms of, uh, of things coming to a head here recently. Okay, so Frank, justice delayed or justice denied? Well, the, as the saying goes, justice delayed is justice denied. But, but I want to pick up on the, on the cost issue that, that uh, was just raised. I think justice like health care is indispensable for our society, but it's also very expensive. And I, I think we're now being confronted with the prospect of, of having to get a little bit innovative with our justice system as with our health care system. Judges are terrible, really expensive courtrooms actually buildings are cheap compared to the cost of judges prosecutors staff and so on uh, and and I think we really have to start looking at more creative ways of delivering justice so what does innovation mean to you then well uh, for example and and there's going to be a lot of resistance to this just like the docs resist a lot of change in health care the my profession law and, and judges will resist but for example specialized courts with lower paid officiating you don't maybe you don't need a three hundred thousand dollar a year queen's bench judge to decide every legal dispute maybe you can you know turn the create more specialized lower level courts that can expedite things and so on at, at a lower price I mean we have we have to look at these things anyway because I, I just as my friend said we just can't afford the status quo is there any need then Keith for uh, another courthouse in Red Deer or is it or is it a matter of being innovative I don't think the building is really the issue here yeah. uh, I think there's a lot of related issues one is that no matter how expensive they might be the federal government has not appointed Queen's bench judges for a long time uh, and Alberta I think has suffered more than other places from that because it's our population that it was growing 
Um, I also think that we're likely to have a decrease in crime rates as time goes on because all of those people that we're adding to the, to the totals will be leaving the province and going back to Ontario and Newfoundland and the Maritimes Careful and where all you're targeting those Mikey. places. <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the first thought people have is that times are tough, crime goes up. But there's less money to spend on drugs and wild women, <laughs> less stuff to steal. So crime rates actually go down. And as these single young male high-risk people leave the province, probably will have a winnowing of crime rates. I wouldn't call this a justice system anyway. I'd call it a legal system because if you're looking for justice, you ain't going to find much of it. All right. On that note, time for a break. Up next, the growing debate over Alberta's jury selection process. More from our crime panel after the break.